You're watching Share Shoot Art here on CNBC Africa, first in business worldwide. I'm Bruce Whitfield. Before the break, Mark and Chris gave us two of their share picks. We saw Chris Gilmore give us British American Tobacco and Bidvest. Well, one of the bees got the thumbs up, one got the thumbs down. British American Tobacco. Chris Gilmore was very chuffed that his first pick was, was chosen. Bidvest, however, was unceremoniously shot down. Mark Whitten from Kaizen Asset Management. BHP Billiton got a thumbs up and he's short on Exaro also got a thumbs up. So we've got Mark Whitten into the final stretch in the lead by about three lengths so far. You're going to have to fight hard for this one, Chris Gilmore, if you've got any intention of salvaging some of your dignity. Let's see whether or not you've got something nasty to say about Kumba Iron Ore. Mark Whitten, long, short, no surprises, 30 seconds. No, definitely long. I think it's just very, very oversold at these levels. Um, you know, we take a view on uh, the long-term projections for iron ore. Everybody thinks it's going below 100, but it seems to be very well supported at $130. The strip ratios at the Sishan Iron Ore Complex have gone up, but that being said, that, that, that pit's still producing around a 60% margin. The columella ramp-up is moving along very rapidly. Um, so, you know, Kumba's iron ore is very much in demand because the moisture content is very low. So in the Northern Hemisphere, they love it, especially in China, because it doesn't freeze when they feed it into their stockpiles. So net-net, we see the demand is still improving as China continues to, to urbanize. I just want to actually keep talking because I've just learned something about iron ore I never knew. Low moisture content in the iron ore stops it from yeah, freezing it's like, the It's like 30% moisture content. And the moisture content in some of the iron ore they pull out of, particularly the, 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 the South Asian, the South Indian seas, that side of the world, is very slushy. It's full of moisture. Um, and it actually causes the ships to almost capsize. Uh, that I've heard before. Okay, yeah. no, that, that so this is, it doesn't freeze when it goes into their stockpiles in winter. So they, they love it from that point of view. Secondly, it's such a small producer in terms of overall mm. numbers. It's kind of like even if iron ore you know, demand goes down, they tend to you know, get rid of the export. The biggest constraint to them is not how much iron ore they can mine, it's how much they can get through Soldana. It, it, it's, it's the Sishan iron the ore line, it's the railway line, it's yeah. the port, it's mm. the efficiency of those ports and the ability the to dividend yield is those. close to 8% forward yield. I think they'll easily do 20 rand in the second half. It's a sleepy easy stuff for me, especially if you're short Kumba, I mean short Exaro against it. For the first time in the history, of share shootouts, yes. I have a sneaking suspicion as to what's about to happen. <laughs> you can't possibly, in a month of Sundays, shoot this one down. I yes. dare you to try. Yes, no, I'm going to shoot this one down. Um, oh, once again, we, we, we had this and sold it about 18 months ago. Uh, I think a lot of the problems revolve around the fact that it, it, it is iron ore. Um, and that share price, I, the, sorry, the, the, the price for iron ore I think is going to be pretty sluggish and, and, and it's going to be stagnant for quite some time. Yes, the Chinese come in and they pr pr provide a bit of a floor to do the, uh, the iron ore price. The other problem I have with this is the ongoing battle that they have with ArcelorMittal. And yeah. that hasn't as yet been truly f fully resolved to everyone's satisfaction. Um, if, for example, they were forced to come back and supply at uh, cost plus three, that could be a bit of a problem for them. Are they realistically, in no, I, I this don't, lifetime, I don't think that's in this going reality, happen. going to be forced to, uh, no. on that contract when ArcelorMittal blew it as badly yeah, as they did? But uh, you know, they're, they're probably going to have to have a compromise uh, solution to this one at, at, at some point in time. Um, and the other one, of course, is, uh, and you touched on the logistics, physically getting it out. Um, that's going to provide a, a problem for them. Love, love the company, and I love the, the deposits, particularly the new one, the, the Columella mm. one. But, um, I think for the foreseeable future, this is going to be a... a, a are are like you doing it just so that you don't go down in history <laughs> as the only bloke in history to accept all three of your competitor shares on share shoot or do you genuinely believe... It would be very doing? disingenuous of me to say, um, I, I accept this one when we, uh, we, we, on behalf of our clients, we actually sold this one okay. quite some time ago. No, right. Okay, He's ha yes. he has integrity. He has integrity yeah, on this one. Yeah. Is there an argument to be made that you are vulnerable uh, in Kumba Iron Ore to the Iron Ore price? Is that a real argument to your mind? Yeah, I think there's no, you know, you can never tell what the price of a commodity is going to be. Nobody knows what the price of platinum, you know, gold, oil, etc. is going to be. I just think that, you know, as you see, the, you know, the rest of, particularly the rise of this Asian empire we're seeing, you know, China-centric Asia is rising and the demand for steel, there's a very close correlation between urbanization mm -hmm. and the demand for steel per capita. You know, everybody wants, you know, a nice car and a, and a decent home to live in. And I think, that, like I said, even if Chinese demand does slow, the end of the day, Kumba's iron ore is in such demand because of the quality of the ore. So I think between that, the fact that the rand is, is holding where it is and volumes will ramp up over time. What he's also doing is he's increased the strip ratio in the short term, but I think in the longer term, once they remove the overburden, you'll get a much better quality of, of ore coming through. So the dividend alone is, you know, if the earnings are flat for five years, think about it, you're getting back, you know, pretty much half the price of what you're paying for it Are now. you going to go back to the office tomorrow, Chris Gabon, and say, we need to relook at Kumba Iron Ore? We, we, we've taken a view that it's going to be, um, it's going to languish for quite some time. Okay, so mm -hmm. you're shooting it yeah. down. 
Yeah. Here we go. Kumbaya and Aura shot down. I believe you. I believe you. I like your story. It's a macro call. Exactly. I think, I think the company call. itself is extremely well. That's the highest margin on the JSC. Yeah? Yeah, that's 60, the dividend yield is what is so attractive. <laughs> but then so is African banks. Uh, right, your <laughs> final pick for this evening. Chris Gilmore from Apps Investments. Distel in 30 seconds. Sin all the way through your portfolio. Yep, this used to be very much a kind of widows and orphan stock. You know, it was something you bought for a, a nice uh, improved dividend. In fact, they've actually got a much better track record than, than people think. And I think the most recent acquisition of uh, the company that makes that wonderful uh, Scotch whiskey, Buna Arvin, yes. um, is, uh, you know, I think that's going to hold them in very, very good stead. Other than that, there are the alcohol pops at the lower end of the market, the young end of the market, doing exceptionally well. Now, look, I think uh, this is a very well-structured company, even allowing for the fact that um, there may be a bit of an overhang of shares when SAB decides to, to get rid of its holding. It is interesting how they've positioned themselves at the top end with Bisquis in France, buying a, buying a chateau, buying a, a, a cognac operation, and now with Buna Arbin. Harvin or Arbin? Arbin. Buna Arvin. It's Arvin. So the double yeah. B is a V. Yeah. Scottish. And Gary. Yeah. Okay. So Buna Arvin and, and also with Bisquis, they've, they've really you know, tried to capture the top end of that market while at the same time selling clippies and coke to teenagers. Yes. All right. You've got to like to sell. Come on. No, I like the business. I think I think as a I like the product. Let me rather say I think <laughs> the product is excellent. Oh. I think like like uh, tobacco, it's very sticky and it's one of those products that are consumed very rapidly. And then you know the next day you need to buy more of it. Um, we like to tell in that we play it through SAB, so we hold SAB, which is our exposure there. We are a bit concerned with the style in that their brands at the top end, you know, when you're competing against the more mainstream con consumer brands like Enbev has, you know, Johnny Walker Black, things like that, Shivers Regal, I think that's where the concern comes in. And also the liquidity in the counter is very tight. So unless you're a long-term investor, which, you know, where we trade, we're not. We, we mm. pretty much, um, we're more in the dating game rather than the getting married <laughs> game. So uh, that's the reason we wouldn't hold the share. But overall, yeah. I think the product is brilliant. For, for a one night stand, this is, the, the, this, is not, this is not a pick. If you're going for a, for a golden wedding anniversary one day, you'll do OK. Yeah, least. more of a smash and grab. We definitely <laughs> look at the SAB. <laughs> <laughs> the OK, is, uh, you, you, you're shooting it down. Simply from your own perspective, this is not one that you would want to. I think, I, think there's, I prefer the, the beer brand. I prefer if I had to play a global like a Diageo or a, a, you know, an Imbep. I think that's the kind of route we would go. I think the business is exceptionally well run, great managed, all the things we like, but yes, I, I think there are better opportunities out there. There we go. At this point, we have to decide who is going to win and who is going to go. So, by the way, you're shooting it down. Yeah. So my job's been made easy for me this evening. Chris Gilmore from Absent Investments to pick not one, but two of his competitor shares. Let's just remind you what Chris Gilmore did. Mark Whitten from Kaizen AM picked uh, BHP Bulletin, Nixaro as a short and Kumba Iron Ore. Chris Gilmore shot down Kumba Iron Ore. He had to accept that Mark Whitten had a good point to make with a short on Nixaro and he gave a big thumbs up to BHP Bulletin. Chris Gilmore's picks of British American and Tobacco were, were given the thumbs up, but Bidvest and Distel were shot down. I did say at the beginning of the show that I sometimes set people on fire and like a moth to a flame, Chris Gilmore Poof, I have the power. Okay. It's a wonderful you feeling. Like a That's all we have time for this week. We'll be back on Thursday on CNBC Africa. Well done to Mark Whitten from Kaizen, who is this evening's winner of Share Shootout, improving his track record. Remember, do catch me on Twitter. Give me your Share Shootout suggestions and your thoughts and your abuse. I can take it. I'm a really big boy. At Bruce Business on Twitter.com. Catch us next week and again when we pick out winners and we shoot out unceremoniously and vaporize the rest. Good night.